Look out. Footy's back. Welcome to AFLW today, your new one-stop shop for all things AFLW. Well, it's not new because we've been going for like eight weeks now, but anyway, you get the drift. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, joined by the super professional, really dressed up, Bryony Dawson. Thank you. Different jacket. God damn, it looks Thank good. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm here as professional Bryony today. Yeah. <laughs> and we have the stats guy. Yeah, I feel a bit underdressed next to Bryony. Looking it very is, sharp. Yeah, that's all right. That not is too a, bad. A bit of polo. That is it. What, what year did you buy that polo yeah, in, it's mate? Faded. Uh, hey? no, last it's last year. I think. Uh, Mate, that looks like golden it's boy. six years old. It goes through every watch. <laughs> you can't tell the camera. Yeah. <laughs> it is, every day I wear this, yeah, yeah. It is faded <laughs> as my outlook on life right now. Uh, anyway, oh, oh, geez. subscribe. You right? We'll get to that in the in the news <laughs> and injury list. Right. He's uh, back. Before we get into that, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that notifications button so you get notified anytime that a show goes up. We've also got the AFL W, the AFL men's, sorry, should I say, it's going on at the moment, trade talk. Trade season is really boring at the moment, nothing's happening. I know. We have a lot of footy going on here. Make sure you get around the podcast channels, which are Spotify and Apple Podcasts, five stars, rating, review, all that good stuff. And of course, social media, TikTok, Instagram, X, Facebook, it's all there, AFLW Today. Anyway, can you smell it? Because Forty's back. Yes. Forty's back. Let's go. Got to look out for my voice. It, it might go. So there's your warning. <laughs> anyway, wait. why I'm depressed and my outlook on life is as faded as Stats Guy's shirt. Whoa. Laura Gardner's <laughs> basically out for the rest of the year. Oh, This sucks. Yeah, that's a massive loss. That's a massive Sydney loss. Sydney has so a, many outs there. It's yeah. a guaranteed 30 touches a week. Gone. I know. Yeah. Well, it does leave room for other people to step up. And as yes. we have seen this season, there are people who have been able to step up and get some numbers yes. on the board. True. Sophia True. Hurley going to have to step up big time. But So she's got a broken hand or something, having surgery. Out for a month. Ah, oh, she could be back for the West Coast game in the final round. Just, just put her on ice for the rest of the season. She can hang out with Ali Morford and Chloe Malloy and everyone else. Oh, I know. The list is that bench. Sydney is oh. Swans all that Australia. Bench looks it's good. A very good. Anyone bench. who made the All Australian team from the Swans last year injured. Oh, can you tell them? That's vibes? actually not. That's, that's not great. No. no. <laughs> Thankfully, only one of them's an ACL. I'm mm. fine. Anyway, uh, Lauren Aaron's is out. Basically for the season as well with yeah. her busted foot. This is why the short season is annoying. Obviously, we're saying it's going to progressively get longer. Mm -hmm. But you have a four to six week injury. In a men's season, you can come back, and a women's one uh, just fine. annoys me. Yeah. You can still win the brown line. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have it in the middle of the year, you can make it back. It's frustrating for yeah. Yeah, for when you have those four to six weeks. Yeah. So no good for Lauren. Uh, Jamie Lambert got banned for a dangerous tackle on Tuesday night. It's everything you don't want in a tackle. She grabbed the other hand and slung the opponent into the ground head first. A they are challenging they it, are. apparently, They've but immediately I challenged. doubt it was pretty dangerous. I, I struggle to see how she's going to get off. Does anybody not challenge these days? I think there's some way just like, yeah, I can't. Well, I but feel like right. the, the but, dangerous yeah. tackle is very ambiguous at the moment yeah. because it's new, blah, blah, blah. So, Especially yeah. if you're a player that's like really good in that team. They're like, yeah. oh, if you're good, let's just challenge but it. But I think yeah. if, you, not, but like, if you grab if the, not that good. If you grab the free arm and then bang head yeah, it didn't. It didn't look good. But yeah. do yeah. you know it's the free arm? Like well, that tackle, arm, like I don't know if she knew where she uh, was. There was a there was a lot going on, and I don't think all the time you know. Yeah, yeah. In the heat of the moment, it I just doesn't that. look good. It's, well, how does she get out of that? Don't don't grab there, the arm. Like, yeah, but there's but because you're allowed to grab the arm. I guess you're allowed to grab the arm. But you're not tough one. You're not allowed to grab if if you're tackling someone and you grab the arm and sling them to the ground. That's when you know. That's when you're in control. When yeah. you're in control of what is happening, she was already in a perpetual motion yeah. when she went into that tax. So I'm point. like, you know, it's like at what point does she click in that 0.25 well, of a second thing. to be like, I've got to pull out of that. Yeah. Good like, point. Good point. We did see Toby Bedford the week after he got suspended in the men's season. He went to do the exact same thing, and halfway through, he was like, Oh God, no! Yeah, he just let go. <laughs> yeah, that's no, why. not happening. Which we don't want to see that. But it's yeah. almost like he pointed the camera, like nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also. In great news for the stats guy and I, yes. we're going to interview Tiana Smith right now. All right, how good's this? Fresh off a big win over the Giants at Frankston on Tuesday night, kicked possibly one of the goals of the year, and yeah. we'll get into that a little bit later on. As Tiana Smith joining us from St Kilda, welcome in, Tiana. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be on. Awesome. First things first, you were never passing that goal on Tuesday night, were you? No way. One, two <laughs> as well. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I was glad that Boydie gave that back to me. I was screaming for it and she, she knew her role, so it was good. Uh, yeah. yeah, that is one of the goals of the year. Just the, the speed, the, the sheer, yeah, the pace on the wing. The one-two, that's the that's yeah. my favourite part. Just calling for it back. Just had to keep the goal. Beautiful. I enjoyed how there was no one within 40 metres of you. That was great. <laughs> yeah, too quick. I, I never have that much space, so when I saw it, I was like, got to take that on. Yeah, that was awesome. 
So we're not known for our serious footy questions, but we'll get it out of the way straight away. <laughs> uh, important to get that win on Tuesday because it had been a couple of lean weeks and and you put a score on the board too. So that you must be feeling confident and better heading into this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we started off pretty well, um, 3-0, and um, even though we weren't playing um, the style of footy that we wanted to. And then, yeah, the next few weeks we sort of lost a bit of form. But I think against Adelaide we sort of – um, sort of started again playing the way that we wanted to play and just yeah we really wanted to start yeah like you said putting some more scores on the board um, our team defense and contest had been pretty solid but just wasn't yeah coming to show um, on the scoreboard so it was good to get a win yeah you're saying playing how you wanted it is that uh, maybe scoring over 40 sort of 50 sort of point mark is that is that what you're aiming towards most weeks is obviously got the uh, goal kicking ability throughout yourself throughout the whole team is that as offense a big priority because you're already really good at defense um, I mean, not particularly, to be honest. Okay. Um, Dal speaks a lot about team defense and offense will just sort of come from that. So we don't train that a lot, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, obviously when you've got natural forwards like uh, Jesse Wardlaw and the likes, um, just sort of goals hopefully Absolutely. will come naturally. And yeah, it was nice to get a few goals on the board on the weekend, on Tuesday, sorry. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it feels weird saying midweek footy a lot of time. <laughs> how are you finding the midweek footy? It's it's a very compressed fixture. Like mm. how's the body feeling? Because, you know, you seven, eight games into the season and then it's like four games in 14 days, basically. How are you feeling and how's the team feeling? Yeah, the team just really sees it as a challenge, to be honest. I mean, every other team has to do the same thing, so everyone's in the same position. Um, obviously, it's a little bit difficult when you've got injuries and stuff to manage. Um, we've had a few recently. so But, yeah, personally, the body's feeling really good. Lucky that I'm on sort of the younger side and I'm not feeling the effects of it too much. But... I just love being able to play footy. So oh. honestly, not training as much and playing games is it's a win for me. Big in our language. We just yeah. want more footy. More yeah. footy. We just yeah. play footy every day, but then that's not Homer fair in the players. donuts machine, just <laughs> yeah. feed us footy. That's what we're all about here. Just Absolutely. give me more footy. Absolutely. As long as, you know, there's no injuries. Um, yes. But you've had a an injury riddled couple of seasons in the past as well. So like you run her up in the best and fairest, and then you basically miss two years. And then you run around the best and fairest again. Crazy comeback. How was the two years? Like, given the seasons are so short, how how was that to miss so much footy? Yeah, it was pretty tough, to be honest. I never really had too many serious injuries before either. So um, coming in, obviously, you just expect to miss the one year. And then I started hearing some rumours during that season that the season might be um, pushed forward and I was sort of like oh I hope that doesn't happen um, just because I knew that it would put me in an awkward position and I was pretty close to getting back but they just didn't want to rush it so I'm pretty grateful that they didn't and I've probably had yeah a couple of the best pre-seasons I've been able to have and get the fittest and strongest that I've been able to so yeah it was tough but it's definitely held me um, in good stead. Yeah who what about uh, what or who helped you along the way to get back to that best obviously coming our best and fairest runner up again last season is there anyone along the way behind the club behind the scenes that sort of helped you or what was the yeah the main factor you got to go get back to your best uh there was a fair bit of change after my first year obviously uh nick del sano yep. took over peter Searle. um both of them were amazing um support and just the sort of the people behind the scenes all of the rehab um staff that were coming in on their off days and just doing so much work with me and just yeah all the teammates that i had um the support was incredible and just felt so loved during that whole experience awesome all right we've had four minutes of footy chat I'm, yeah I'm, I'm, too, too I'm, serious I'm, too, way <laughs> too serious and it's great but uh, outside of footy, I know well, at the moment you don't have much time to do anything outside of footy, but what what are your hobbies? What what sort of keeps you grounded? Because as you said before we got on, we had a chat with Darcy Vessier last week. Rug making. <laughs> They're the a big rug maker. <laughs> do you have anything as cool or as interesting as that? <laughs> I would like to say I do, but unfortunately I do not. Um, I Honestly, I'm just a bit of a sport enough, a footy enough, anything. Oh, yeah, anything footy sport related I'll be watching, I'll be keeping up to date with. Um, my main sort of hobby is camping. Um, obviously, oh. that's pretty tough in the uh, during the season though, but in the off-season, I like to go out camping with the rooftop tent, travel around Australia, um, that sort of thing. And at the moment, as we speak, I've got a couple of nieces over, so I've got some nieces and nephews that love spending time with. Um, quite young as well, so they awesome. keep me on my feet. But, yeah, some family time as well. Very good. Where's your favourite spot to camp in Australia? Baby time. Yeah. Yep. I think there'd be a few cool spots that you would have been to if you've gone all around Australia. Yeah, absolutely. I love South Australia. I think it's really underrated. Oh, cool. um, 
just did like South Australia and Western Australia earlier this year and the Eyre Peninsula, uh, even across the Nullarbor, some interesting places, but it's just really cool to see that side of Australia as well. Yeah, beautiful. So while everyone's like nicking off to Mexico or somewhere for the off season, <laughs> you're like, nah, go on camping, <laughs> see you later, yeah. phone off. Like, is that just getting Relaxing, away from the yeah. world, just sort of basically piecing out and almost, almost Joe Danaherring it? Yeah, yeah, he does that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I like to just switch off. Just um, nature, I love the beach, all that sort of things. Just keep me grounded. Uh, switch the phone off, go for hikes, just the real simple things. I think that's what I really love. Yeah. No, that's great. So during the season, stuff like that sort of does help keep you grounded. I suppose staying mentally relaxed is probably one of the most important things at this part of the season. Is it just stuff mm-hmm. like that, going for walks, staying away from your phone and social media? We had the horrible trolling incident with Maddie Prasparkas last week. So like, how does that sort of uh, factor into your life and footy? Yeah, obviously it's pretty hard to avoid social media these days in the world that we live in. So mm. just try to stay away from that as much as possible. Um, and yeah, if we have a, a night off, even I'll, yeah, even get away for a night, even if it's just uh, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, a couple of hours down the road, um, just switch off really. Um, yeah, nature, hikes, beach, everything yeah. like that. I like it. Beautiful. Now, Get to this is technically footy chat, but it's not really. Like, so uh, some pump up songs before the game. You've got the headphones in, you're warming up. What are we it's listening to? One, What's the Spotify playlist looking like? I have very broad music taste. It can be anything from old Aussie rock, ACDC, Cold Chisel to Drake, Travis Scott rap, even country. So it really changes on the vibe. It literally can be anything. <laughs> Bit of anything. Bit Going of rock, from bit AC, of rap. DC to Drake. Yeah, I don't that, think I've any th- heard of anything less Australian. That's, that's awesome, I reckon. <laughs> it's got a bit of everything depending on the day. What about you, Stats Guy? What's your pump up song? Uh, I don't mind a bit of uh, The Killers every now and then. I know that's a bit of a weird God. shout. Or the presets. The presets I really like as well, which is a weird shout as well. Yeah, yeah a bit yeah. of my people. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 Now, I, I'm born in the early 90s. Limp Biscuit Roll. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> wow. uh, yeah. On the other side of that, we've got to ask. Whose music are you looking to avoid as the DJ in the rooms, uh, Diana? There's a few. I try to stay away from the music, just avoid the judgment. But oh, um, they're smart. <laughs> Steph Kiyochi, obviously, okay. she's a little bit older. Some of her music <laughs> taste is probably not the same as us younger girls. Um, Serene Watson is usually in charge of the music, and most of the time she does a pretty good job, but it's very... Doof, doof, and electric, which sometimes <laughs> on a Saturday morning when you're in the club at 7 a.m., it's Ooh, probably not the 7 best thing to be Yeah, that's to. brutal. <laughs> nah, not feeling it Definitely that would wake you up even if you haven't had your coffee yet, I guess. Yeah, but you're also yeah. like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I like that. Any weird pregame rituals that you need to go through before a game or you just turn up, you know, sock, sock, shoe, shoe, like what, what are we doing before a game? Yeah, nothing too serious, to be honest. I try to stay away from that sort of stuff (laughs) in case anything happens. Um, Just the usual sort of eat the same meal, um, try to do the same things, just keep my mind off footy in the morning or whenever we're playing. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, nothing too spectacular. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I've got I've got to ask Brian his question for them, and we haven't had it in a few weeks. I'm nervous for you. No, I'm not. I'm just joking. It's grand final day and you're you're not playing in Melbourne. Let's just say you're playing in Perth and, and you wake up and you go to get out and go down to breakfast, but the handle snaps off the door. You've got 1% battery left on your phone. You have one phone call to get someone to come and save you. Who are you calling and why? To get to the granny. And then who aren't you calling because they are, for whatever reason, they are just useless. <laughs> um. I'm probably calling Darcy Guttridge. Oh. She's got a good head on her shoulders, um, <laughs> very mature for her age, and she's very good with fixing sort of things and situations. So I'd be calling her. Very nice. Um, I would not be calling Liv Vesley. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> uh, just Liv, you know. I love her, but just probably not someone that would help you in that situation. Her Prime would probably be dead as well. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's probably me in lots of situations. That is you. You yeah, are useless on a dead. Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, like absolutely. stats guy, can you just no, nah, nah. no good. <laughs> I love it. Uh, good answer. And, and just finally, we, we do need to touch on. Of course, it is Pride Round currently in AFLW. How important for a group? Because obviously, uh, your club in general as well, St Kilda, playing the Pride game in the men's side of things as well. How important is this round to not just you as a person, but the club and the league as a whole? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, Saints vs Sydney has been, um, yeah, doing that for a while in the men's league. So it's great that our whole club can get behind um, Pride Round and support it. It's a, it's a really important round, um, not just for our team, but for the whole community, our fans, staff, just everybody, just making sure everyone's comfortable and footy is a place that everyone can come to. So if we can do our part, then, yeah, we're just trying our best with that. All right, I like it. Very I think nice, that's yeah. a great way to just cap off the interview. Yeah. We've had silliness, but we've had a great answer like that. So absolutely, this Sunday, 3.05 p.m., the Saints take on the D's down at RESA Huge Park game. at Moorabbin. Win this for the Saints, and they may get close to locking in a final spot. Head to Ticket Tech, $15 for everyone. And if you're under 18, it's free. Yes. A big thank you to Tiana Smith for joining us today on AFLW Today. Thanks, guys, for having me. All right, shout out to St Kilda. Thank you to their media manager, Michaela. And, of course, Tiana Smith. How jealous are you that Stats Guy and I got to hang out? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Same time. with Darcy Bessio as well. I know, well. I know. You've, yeah. You would have interviewed him all before. Down my busy life. Yeah. 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 <sighs> it must suck being awesome. I know. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Stats Guy and I would not know. Anyway, nah. we're going to start off. Uh, it is the week seven wrap. We've had two games so far. Of course, importantly, massively, it is Pride Round yes. in AFLW. Handball, straight to Bryony. And I'm, is... the, I'm the biggest gay in the village here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I thought I'd, I'd you, talk about what Pride you, What are you, head gay? What are we? What are we oh, here? I'm the, the, the president, yeah, president of, yeah. of the gays. Okay. I don't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> Pre- president of the community, Pride Round, something that needs to be done in football. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, great. it's been really awesome. I th- Like the release of the Pride Guernsey and all the teams jumping on board this week, seeing all that content online, players talking about uh, what pride means to them, especially like around the club, the club supporting them. Um, I think sometimes in life when you're, you know, the only gay in the village, you can feel a little bit um, lonely. And I think that that's why the the pride round um, is really so important because visibility is so important and and kids growing up in, you know, country, Victoria, you know, all around Australia, um, to be able to see their heroes talk openly um, about what pride means to them, seeing the support from the clubs, the community, everything like that. Um, I think that's really important because there's still a lot of shame around all of that. So um, well done, everyone. Great work on your pride Guernsey, some not so much, but well done in yeah. general. I'm, I'm, thought, I'm yeah. giving two clubs negative marks. I, I can't really <laughs> say anything, but in fairness, there's two that just negative marks. Yeah, but well done on the AFL being uh, such a leader yep. in this space and to everyone sharing their stories. Well done. Absolutely. Good on footy Great and call. all the clubs for making football inclusive for everyone. Which yep. is Women's football yeah. inclusive Women's football, yes. for everyone. We're probably not doing enough We're in not the uh, Definitely men's. not no, doing enough in the men's. Go. That's Swan, all right. Swans have a pride game. It's fine. Yeah. It's totally fine. Well, yeah, not, most teams <laughs> What don't. is it? Swans and um, St. Kilda. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, a lot well, of well teams can One do game that. out of 800. Yeah. Two teams. Very good. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice. <laughs> all right. Let's start the wrap. Speaking of, St. Kilda, they beat GWS uh, 7-7-49 to 2 15 at Frankston on Tuesday night. Hey, St. Kilda scored more than 23 points. That Woo! was fun. Well They're done, back. St. Kilda. <laughs> Lambert decided to go, you know, I'm... Might get suspended, but hey, I'm going to dominate this game. Yeah, she really, yeah. really stepped up, didn't she? Well done. 27. 20, yeah. Sorry, you go. 20, no, you go, you go. 27 disposals, 11 tackles, 8 clearances. Mm. That is an excellent game in anyone's book, my friend. Yeah, no, Saints are really good. Runoff half back, good ball movement. I think the Giants, uh, for, to the first half of the season so far, they were trying to attack, attack, yeah. attack. Then they're coming up against teams that are just going, oh, we're just going to attack and you guys have to defend. And they don't like that. No transition. They no. don't have transition, whereas yeah. the Saints transition was just awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, Smith's goal, that run from def- uh, from defensive half, the chip, yep. the get back, and the goal, that just cut, cut them up. There was no one near her for the whole 70 metres that she yep. was running. So yep. that showed how they got cut up. It just sort of shows where both teams are. It's like St Kilda, kind of sort of there. Yeah. GWS, that bottom six level. But you also got to point out, like, some of their players are playing well. Like Parker's playing well. Friend Once of the again, pod. Friend of the yes. pod. Ten clearances, you know. Beeson as well. Yeah. 18 handballs, though. Like, I, I, I see it. It's like a bit more on the boot, yeah. Haven't dominated much of the game. Like, 18 handballs, trying to get it out. The same when we'll get to the Adelaide and Melbourne game in a second, which we'll talk about. But Beeson was good. Footy in the hands, 495 metres gain. Yeah. Tried their hardest, but... Why I've had all year for GWS. How are they going to score? Yeah. Mm. I mean, those two have played well consistently yeah. across oh, yeah. the whole season, you know. We've, we've talked about them last week and, yeah. Um, they just can't get on the board, the Giants, can they? No, no. no. They, they show signs of, like, real promise. A couple and of little hinty really moments, yeah. And then 
then they have a game like this and you're like, oh, they're not mm. there yet. But maybe I think it's next year for the Giants. We've yeah. been asking for Jesse Wardlaw to step up. Three goals. And importantly, 10 disposals, 10 kicks. Proper four. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. Have Tidy. a shot or, or go, yeah. to, go forward at everything. Yeah. <laughs> None like of this that. handball rubbish you're a forward. <laughs> Bam back to St Kilda are like, cool, 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 yeah. cool, we're back. And then they're up well, to seventh, I think. Yeah. yeah, so they'll be happy that they're in the finals, but they're not pushing that top And four. GWS yeah, are like, Frankston's just a worse version of Bankstown. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just don't there care. There you go. Uh, in the upset of the season, and I've lost the score here, but it really wasn't that that high scoring. Melbourne beat Adelaide. Melbourne beat Adelaide. This this was that like is unbelievable. Uh, that's unbelievable this season. Yes. Okay. Usually not. Yeah. It, like at the start of the season, like oh yeah, that can happen. No, absolutely not. Would have said that at the start of the no, season. No, but you, you can understand it. Whereas six weeks in, you're like, nah, not happening. No chance. Adelaide are in a full slump. You called it. I called you it. You called can, it. Unbelievable. But I didn't think they were going to lose. I thought they could have another close uh, win, which is what they've been having. Nobody here. picked this. Cool. One goal, eight, 14, defeated by the Demons. Two goals, four, 16. Fun fact, Melbourne Demons had the earliest earliest win in the in the in in an AFLW game ever, as in they kicked their second goal in the first quarter, and it's the earliest that a game-winning goal has been kicked. <laughs> that That's pretty cool. Uh, I got there eventually. That's wow, crazy. they're so impressive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they just hold down pretty well defensively. Obviously, the Crows no, no, one they didn't eight. hold down defensively. They got yeah. they got lucky that Adelaide were like, oh, how are we going to kick this in the fourth line? Here we go, atmosphere bomb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're, oh, we're three on one. Let's very, go. It was very unlike Adelaide. It's so yeah. unlike them, yeah. wasn't it? I was like, how are they playing right now? Hmm. Where is the team that we know? I mean, Melbourne put on the best pressure. Yep. That, yeah. like, I think we've seen this season. Is it weird that I enjoyed watching this game? Oh, I, I was like, this is so boring. It was very I was unlike both sicko. teams. Because even Melbourne at times this season, even though they've been bad, they they still have a bit of class yeah. about them. But, oh, this was yeah. a tough game. Chelsea Randall was like, okay, fine, I'm going to do it. I'm going to win us this match. That last quarter, yeah. every time she got near it, she looked like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> she was just like... She looked bigger, stronger, yep. furious, more intense than every other player out there. Like and she that. was like, you're not going to get me. You're not going to catch me. I'm Almost won it off her own boot. Yeah, did just, her best. They could, one goal, eight. That's just oh, I really oh. thought she was going to kick that goal. I, I was like, this is it. This yeah. is the one. Yeah. Yeah. This is the moment you stand up for. Well, yeah. you had, what was it? Was it uh, Ponce missed the shot from the top of the goal square that hit the post in the second quarter? Yeah. That, yeah. Go back to that. That's the thing that's lost in the game. But you also had, uh, they had, uh, and Hatchard missed a couple of sitters. Chelsea yep. Randall missed one. Uh, just bad kicking all night has cost them. We can mention the umpiring because the umpiring was pathetic. We don't usually we haven't actually mentioned the umpiring too much on this show, but you can if you want. That was one of the most egregious games I've ever okay. seen. Okay, Adelaide fans are probably just like, what the <laughs> hell? Just twenty-five to twelve free kicks, and some of them like it's like the umpires have honestly forgotten the rules. Like, yeah, it's a free. Yeah, it's oh, kind yeah. of all right. So I agree that the oh, umpire was bad, I'm, but they can't blame. The umpire of kicking one no, guy. You can't. But you can't when you've lost by two points and it's twenty-five no. free kicks to nah. twelve. But you said they missed one from the top of the goal yeah, square. But it, but it is like you're going forward and then you're having the football taken off you as well. Yeah, when you lose I by know. two points, but it's also like kick the ball straight, take it out of it. It's yeah. like I was playing under fourteens cricket against a bunch of mates of mine, like different clubs. Anyway, <laughs> what? uh no, this goes into the bad point umpiring. of order, Mr. Speaker. It goes to the bad <laughs> umpiring. So we go up for an LBW decision. And the dad, guy's dad was like, yeah, it's out. And I'm like, and his name was Chook. I'm like, Chook, you really think that was out? Like, I didn't think it was out. He's like, look, he'd been batting like a spud. Could have, kind of hit, <laughs> could have kind of hit the, hit the stumps. I'm like, yeah, go away. That's, <laughs> that's literally what this umpiring was like last <laughs> okay. night. Just go away. Yeah. Yeah. Adelaide uh, are playing really bad, so yeah. go away. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Anne Hatchard had the least effective 28 disposal game I've seen mm -hmm. with Kate Hoare just going, no, 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 no. Really solid on I'm it. I'm not yeah. letting you get anywhere. Took a very, very strong mark late in the game as well yep. to help shore it up. So she did well playing on the ball. And do we just need to mention Ebony Marinoff's probably going to get another three votes. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, at least yeah, at least two. 29, 17 tackles, 10 clearances. Like was doing everything. But unless the umpire's like, oh, Randall. But it's like anytime Marinoff got it, it's like, okay, yeah. we're going to try and do something. But yeah. She's the first ever AFRW player to reach 2,000 disposals, which mm. I saw she's last night. She's the games well. record holder I heard last night. She's, av she's averaging 24 across 85 games. Yes. Is that yes. right? Yes. yes. Spot on. Six, I think. Yeah. No, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I've written in 85, but I pro probably didn't add up the uh, yeah. last one as well. Yeah. So it's probably closer to 25 touches. Uh, Eliza McNamara's face also. Like, I, kn I know that the uh, Melbourne uh, kit, like, so, okay, quick mention, kit rating, Adelaide kit. Ew. Mel oh, no, Adelaide, okay. Adelaide sorry, Ma yeah, sorry yeah. you were talking and, about yeah, Melbourne. And then Melbourne. Melbourne 
Get nah, out. Yeah. Uh, Eliza McNamara's face tried her best to make up for the lack of pride in the game. <laughs> Colourful and, oh, my God, how tough are you? Like, yeah. Honestly, what a weapon. Yeah. Yep. Um, I thought Prowse was really good mm-hmm. in defence for Adelaide and I also also thought Goldrick. Goldrick, was, yeah. Was she game as was well, Irish, awesome yeah. um, for Melbourne. So well done to to those two in defence. I'm yep. a Maddie Newman fan on the wing too. Mm. Uh, fan bases Adelaide are like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> They're, dro- they're, they're slowly dropping and down the Melbourne's ladder. And Melbourne's fan base is, what the hell just happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they're more of a, yeah, happy one. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I like yeah. that. Uh, anyway, let's get into the game previews. All right, tonight, 7.55 p.m., maybe 7.45 p.m., Port Adelaide take on Collingwood at Alberton Oval. Please wear prison bars, Port Adelaide. It'd be funny. <laughs> yeah. They're not. Uh, <laughs> have you seen the kits? No. Okay. That's right. We're, we're social we're on social. Social, we're video coming, social video coming towards you on TikTok. Bryony will be rating every kit. Out of level, 10, of, level of gayness. Level of gayness <laughs> out of 10. All I know is there is a super gay one and it's awesome. If I was a fan of that club, I'd buy it. Anyway, uh, Port Adelaide take on Collingwood. They've never played each other. That's weird. No, there's there's a lot of games this week where they haven't played mm. each other, which yeah surprised me, but there's a couple. Good. All mm. right, so Port really should be looking at this as one to keep pushing towards finals, getting a win here against yeah, Collingwood, who so. are struggling. Yeah, I, the Port have never had consecutive wins before either. So they're coming off wow. like... Consecutive wins the last couple of weeks, yeah. um, so they'll be really pumped up. I mm-hmm. reckon they're going to be feeling was their have... first consecutive last week. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So they're they're, they're they going got, for three got, on the bounce. Yeah. they've never won three. No. So <laughs> you know they they have they've got that sort of winning feeling, which I think is really important. Mm. Um, Gemma mm. Houghton is having the best season she's ever played. She's composed. She's able to sort of finish her intentions a little bit better um, this season. We know that Port are a good scrappy side they can tend to get stuck around the ball but they yeah. do tend to win those scrappy um contests yep. um and we know that collingwood can lean towards that with lack yep. of skill and composure and that kind of stuff so i think in that kind of game port are all over collingwood um in this um they have the outside runners as yeah. well port adelaide like yeah. you've got shanae goody sitting on a wing going oh hi here's the ball go run yeah, yeah go run uh, yeah, yeah. Depends where Ruby goes as well if she wants to play yep. play inside mid for Collingwood now that she's got her tank back after, what, six, seven games? Yeah. So she's I think looking good. The midfield yeah. battle will be interesting, but it's you think Port have just got more class on the outside and, and kick a score. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've chucked in here. You've got um, Horton, Lamb, and Tickle all yeah. can kick two goals. They've all kicked two goals in a game this year. Yeah. Whereas you got – Yeah, Lammy's back in. Lamb's yeah, back in, which great. is very handy. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, like they, they, get, they can kick a huge score, whereas mm-hmm. Collingwood just don't have those options down forward. Yeah, they I don't. Think. Yeah. Um, Brie Davies celebrating her 50th game. Awesome, yeah. Well, it kind of makes me a little bit sad. Should be a lot more. Because yeah, she came yeah. in with all those girls who are celebrating yeah. their 75th. True, And true. because she's just been riddled with injury, mm. when she did her ACL was the season that they played two seasons in That's right, so year. she's missed out on that So she's chunk. lived out yeah. too. And then it was the same when she had her concussion. Mm. It was during their condensed fixture and yeah. she missed three games instead. You know, like been so she's unlucky, just been, yeah. yeah, hit with that kind of stuff. So I'm really happy for Brie for her 50th. Are yep. we going to have like the greatest celebration ever when the first player hits a hundy? Oh, aha. <laughs> it's it's going to be Marinoff next Marinoff year. Marinoff at the moment. Yeah. But it, who else is it's up there? It's probably going to be Marinoff next year because Desio. five, six more no, games actually. this year, including finals, gets it to win the 90s. So it's like sort of round yeah. five-ish next year. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited for that. We're going to go. Yeah, I'll be Saying there. it right now. Yeah. Uh, anyway, answer the big question. Can Collingwood keep this close? No. Uh, no, unfortunately not. I think they'll be okay in the midfield, but yeah, on the outside and the goal scoring yep. ability, no. Port by 22. Four goals. I'm going Paul by 30. Let's get to Witten Oval Friday night. Good chips if you're going there. <laughs> Don't get the pancakes. It's a waste of money. Uh, Western Bulldogs taking on Essendon. Again, never played each other. Weird. No. This is going to tell us if your team is legit or not, Bryony, yeah, as an Essendon fan. I agree, yeah. You're absolutely correct. I will also point out that this is the marquee match of the round. Okay. Um, and also a big shout out to the Bulldogs for the emphasis on the trans flag on the Guernsey yeah. as yes, well. Yeah, it's great. It's um, probably my favourite one. Yeah, and it's just a lot of importance on that. It's been spoken about a lot this year mm-hmm. with the Olympics and all that kind of stuff about trans women in sport, and mm. so I just think that's a really good um, message yep. message to send. So well done on, to the Bulldogs on that. They've also got the pride flag on, on the outback yeah. shoulders as well, so they've covered all yeah. the bases. Nice little, nice they really touches, covered yeah. all the bases. Yeah, no lovely. one can complain. No, well I'm, done. I'm actually Someone happy will. This. Someone will, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone definitely will. Yeah, theirs is a, like a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, 
Essendon. How are you yes. feeling? Yeah, no, I'm feeling good. I th- our back, back line is really solid and they oh, really yeah. do a lot under pressure. Um, Matty Gay, Georgia Clark, um, Amy Gaylor, who won the Rising Star last yes. week. She's been so um, good. We know the doggies can get the ball um, inside 50, but they struggle to take a mark inside 50 and they struggle to get on the scoreboard. So yep. I think um, Essendon is definitely going to have the advantage there defensively. Um, no, Lauren Aaron's is big for the dogs as well. Huge, yeah, huge, like underrated little sort of rock there. Not that, underrated, that, I reckon she's been yeah. one of their the, best the, players the all year. Solid, yeah. Yeah. solid, solid. Yeah. Back it's line. like Lauren Aaron's is doing the "You shall not pass." It's like, yeah, bring it on. Yeah. And now yeah. it's like, oh, the damn walls really. It's every team now. you look at, like the top five players from every team, and every team has like two of them gone. Yeah. It doesn't. It's brutal this yeah. season. It's, it's oh, really yeah. bad. But Essendon will need to well, step up. Essendon are at full strength now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, other than Essendon, actually. There you go. Too good, Bannister, Scott, Alexander. Time to step up. That's a fun forward line that should be kicking big scores. You guys should be kicking so many goals. Yeah. Hold a mark. Create some space, get on the end of it and put it on the board. Please. I, I really I'm like. also adding to the pleas of play Bonnie too good up the ground. Mm-hmm. Have the game back. Hopefully the rust has slightly worn off and it's like, you know, got, yeah. the, got the few things. It's like, oh, I everything's the, going well I think the well confidence here. will be back <clears throat> from, yeah. like, as we mentioned, the first getting, game back. Getting Bonnie up the ground, taking marks 70 to 80 out from goal leads to Essen and scoring. Uh, big game for the dogs here because they're going to have to take advantage any time the ball goes inside the Ford 50 because, obviously, Matty Gay's going to be there. Just going, <laughs> nice. Matty Gay's having a great awesome season. Awesome season. I yeah, almost yeah. swore then, but Matty Gay's having <laughs> a, a, good, really, a, good yeah. a really great season. <laughs> really I think she's season. really found her spot in the Bombers, and yeah. I think that you can only she can only grow and build that back line mm-hmm. um, as time goes on. As yeah. much as we love Grig, she needs to get her hands on the footy more. I know she laid yeah. out tackles last week despite only having three touches. Same uh, as Western Turner, I think. Yeah. Definitely, obviously, she's a bit of a taller player, but definitely can get her hands more on the ball. And then I wrote about the dogs. Although they yeah, were really bad against North, they haven't been a better season. Like last season, they mm. couldn't even get on the ball. They've got a couple of wins. They've got some young players coming through. Yeah. At least there's some there's some yeah. good signs there for the next couple of years. Yeah. I want to see more out of Jasmine Smith from the dogs too. Okay. Yeah. Ha- has the talent to do so yeah, as well. Yeah, she can get the footy. Uh, big question. Do we believe in Essendon? <laughs> and that is an excellent question, and it's a TBC from me. <laughs> yeah, we'll get back to you in uh, three podcasts. <laughs> I never doubt it, I believe. You do? Oh, I, you never doubt it. Oh, oh, let's roll the tape, yeah. Never doubt it. I definitely doubt it, but they looked really goals. good the last month. Mm. Four goals. Four goals? Yeah, 24 points. Yep, I'll agree. Saturday, Kinetic Stadium, Frankston, Hawthorne take on West Coast. <laughs> Hawks lead this 1-0. and They won the last meeting by three points. This feels like it's going to be fun. Yeah, I I really enjoy the Hawks. They like we know it's windy down there at Kinetic Stadium. That's what it's called, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, Kinetic. Yep. Um they're really adaptable to conditions they and I think 60 odd points in their game here against Carlton. Yeah. Um and the Eagles can sometimes <coughs> um leave themselves open uh to high scoring from opposition because they get caught in that one-on-one yes. contest in the back they also line go into of, the contest. Yeah, yeah. instead of uh, working <coughs> together as a team. So for me, it's about them being able to shut down the Hawks' offense, mm-hmm. um, but they'll need need a different strategy than you know what they've been up to. Yeah, you got Hawks third on offense, and then yep. the Eagles ninth. So obviously, the Hawks, as we've seen, can kick sixty plus points. I don't know if the Eagles have that in them. They they they'll have to make it a really pressure filled game. Mm-hmm. Daisy loves like just lots of tackles, lots of pressure, and then they sort of get out on the counter attack. But again, they they really have to sort of get the Hawks maybe. 30, 40 points or less. Otherwise, yeah, the Eagles can't keep up here. The problem with West Coast is they've conceded goals in mm. in like quick succession yeah. throughout the year. So yeah. it's, you think about it, they had eight goals in a row kicked against them in Brisbane, five against Port, and even Richmond when they Richmond mm-hmm. made that mad comeback was four or five goals on yeah. the run as well. So when West Coast leak, it's a it's, lot. It's, yeah. Yeah. So but it's gone down. It's keep making sure we can control the damage, but then also scoring at the same time. Yeah. So... I think this is going to be a fun yeah. game yeah. because Daisy and Daniel, they're really trying to sort of open up the game and yep. make it free-flowing. But that's what makes the Eagles susceptible down in defense. They love to play this 100%. one-on-one defence and it's like against the Hawthorne Ford. Yeah. Ooh, you yeah, might, great oh, yeah. might have a big day. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like it's gonna be fun in the midfield. You got Fleming, who's been Justin yep. Fleming's been really good. Vukic, who uh was sort of building throughout the season, was really good last week. So I'm mm. excited to see her in the ruck. And then you got Roberts that Alex has been talking up every week, just being awesome. And yeah, Drennan as well. Alex yeah. Drennan. Yeah. Really good. All right. Can the Eagles pressure stop the Hawks firing forward line? I'm going to say no. Oh. I'm interested to see what 
Daisy does with it. The, the the stats that we are mentioning are not going to be news to her. No. And she'll she'll have a game plan. Yeah. Yeah. In Daisy we trust. In Daisy you trust. I'll <laughs> say I'll say slightly, but the Hawk, yeah, Eagles, sorry, the Hawks will kick two because it's cool. Yeah. Hawks yeah. by 36. Oh, oh smash them. Wow. Bang. I was going to say three goals. I'm here to play today, fellas. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. keep it going. Just put <laughs> on the goals. Puts on the suit. All business, Brian. All business, Brian. Uh, 36. 36. If I don't see 36, <laughs> on the dot. Uh, 15 points. Are there, are uh, oh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> I was even going to say less. Like, I reckon it could be close. Swinburne Centre, Punt Road, 3.05 p.m. Richmond taking on Geelong. How the hell did Geelong lead this four and one? Because they used to be really good they, and consistent. They were a lot more consistent the, <laughs> before this season. And, and Richmond, Richmond hasn't been consistent. Yes. And now they've, you know, yeah. they won they've switched row, yeah. places. The yeah. real Gwyneth Paltrow sliding towards <laughs> moment. Nice. <laughs> All right, let's just go straight to the midfield battle. We've got Conti and McKenzie up against Prasparkas and Morris. Oh, that's yeah, an you exciting You could have a few one. more names in there yeah. as well. Yeah, let's just stick with I that. I just put those <laughs> in because that is just a juicy Simplifying matchup. it for the audience yes. and the yeah. other hosts. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Making it nice and easy for everyone around. Uh, yeah. Geelong held on, didn't kick straight, had 19 scoring shots last week against the Swans and held on for a win. And Richmond just, you know, like, oh, yeah, wet weather, ah, go away, Collingwood, we don't care. Yeah, it's um, cats need to kick straight. So five goals, 14 last week, and then 3-9 yep. the week prior. So they just need more composure in their forward 50, and they just need to have a look around for some better options. Like, obviously, we're playing in – terrible conditions sometimes. Yep. And I think that's where... I don't think the conditions were that terrible in Sydney last no, week. No, but I'm I'm saying generally across the, the board. The, the but season, yeah. What Geelong need to do is when they have that goal, the, the shot on goal that's just sort of outside the range or it's low percentage... Have a look for some different yeah, options. Just a few little Kick around and find leads. and find the right person. And yep. they need to create space in there and be able to present a lead. So but Richmond really, really great um in defense. And also they're able to take goals. Uh, sorry, take marks um in their four fifty. 50. Yeah, so absolutely. You got Katie Brennan, um, Tam Luke and Hosko in there. I'd love to see Hosko step up a little bit. She's she's an intense little Floating unit. In and out. Yeah, she's an intense little unit and is able to create a lot of a lot of pressure, which does have a lot a of impact bit more of the ball, on the yeah. game. Yeah. But I'd love to see her get on the board a little bit more. Yep. No, I agree with that. You got uh, both teams are top eight in offense and defense, even though the cats are a bit lower down the ladder. So mm. that just shows the cats are, are there. They just yeah. they just don't show. One week they'll kick sixty points and then they'll <laughs> kick four. So yeah. is that? Yeah. <laughs> with a cat. Yeah. <laughs> little, cat, little cat scratch. Oh, I love this. Answer the big question. Which Geelong will show up? I knew you would like that one. Is I that a good that one or it's a bit not a good yeah. one? Huh? <laughs> sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. Not I would say, God bless that manager. <laughs> um, I mean, the good Geelong can turn up. They still won't win. Oh, no, I agree. Oofed. I, Oofed. I think I agree with that. Wow. Yeah. Richmond have just got... I, so much, like their balance between offense and defense is awesome at the moment. I find it fascinating, your faith in Richmond. They keep winning. <laughs> There's That's, no better form than Richmond winning. Top four Imagine well. if they didn't lose that game to West Coast. They'd be unbeaten. Mm, okay. Not a believer. <laughs> well, not I, yet. You're I'm a not, hater. I'm not quite the monkey. This is a generational hate. <laughs> uh, Richmond by, let's say a goal. Tight one, good one. Richmond by 12. Oh, 12. <laughs> At least it's not 36. Oh, don't believe it, but they'll still win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they, I think they'll beat Geelong. Yeah. Only because I'm like, Geelong, they, yeah. They, they, Just so hard to pick Geelong. It's yeah. hard to, to show up. Yeah. yeah, I'll go Tigers by a goal as well. Cool. Let's get a Brighton Homes Arena, 5.05 p.m. Also, side note, AFLW leading the way in fixturing. You want to know why, stats man? Here we go. No overlaps. No overlaps! <laughs> it's easy to get have... it right, AFL! It's easy to have no overlaps when you're playing Tuesday to Sunday. No, no, no. Yeah. On Saturday, there's no overlap. Okay. There's four okay. games and there's no overlap. Oh, that's good. Well done. Yeah. Love that 7.30 a.m. game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. No, the way yeah, One into that's three, into five, right. into seven. No, that's good. That's good. I'm happy with that. Big Maybe fan. You can watch Clearly not that stupid Canadian moron that does the <laughs> AFL schedule. Hey, hey, hey. That guy sucks. <laughs> anyway, it's the Q Clash as the Brisbane Lions take on the Gold Coast Suns. Yes. How the hell did Gold Coast draw with Brisbane once upon a time? Yeah, this was a few years ago. Yeah. But they made the finals uh, last yeah. year and they were pretty good the year before. So. Mm. You wouldn't believe it right now. Anyway, uh, the reigning premier is the Lions against last placed Gold Coast. This might not be great for the Suns. Yeah, I wrote this could be a bloodbath. That was this could absolutely I, be a bloodbath. Like Lions are looking awesome. So other yep. than that little blip they had against North, they've just been yep. firing. And the Suns, I, I'm so frustrated with the Suns. Made the finals last year. 
were really, really strong. In they, the they have the pieces there, mm-hmm. but their defense got their defense just is really bad, ripped yeah. apart yeah. from them in the off season. Yeah, yeah, and there's yeah, reason why teams have fallen apart. Oh, of course, you know of course. what I mean. But, but I feel like there's still enough good players there to at least get a win on the board, and they've yeah. only got one draw. So it's yeah, a bit, it's Brisbane are averaging ten goals a game in the last month. <laughs> oh, that's nice. good. So that's how many really goals are they going to kick here? Thirteen. Oh. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. It, it, you're right. It's going to be an absolute bloodbath. Mm. Brisbane are firing on all cylinders. Ali Anderson is having uh, an incredible season. Sophie, Con- like, Sophie the, Conway. It's just, it's just there's depth. This is and without Dak a team. Like, yeah. having a Dak game. Yeah, yeah. Like, Smith <laughs> down forward, leading the goal yeah. kicking. Every part of their sort of, uh, every part of the ground, they've got a, someone dominating. Like, yeah, it's awesome. Hundred percent. Awesome. Yeah. Mm. All right, how are we feeling? Like, because it's just <laughs> we don't this even is want to a talk about one. Because we're like, oh, this it's, is... but it's it's what can we talk about? Because obviously Charlie Robottom is going to have thirty possessions. And it's going to yeah. go to the forward line, and Brisbane just going to be like, sweet intercept, we rebound. So if Conway on the wing is going to get the footy, drive it into the forward line, and Smith or Dax going to take a mark. It's going to be like this all day, mm-hmm. unless Gold Coast play the dirtiest, dirtiest flood we have seen in a long time. Yeah, I don't think they will. Real a lot of them, Ruse throwback. Like, <laughs> a lot of them like to play on the outside. you got uh, Tara Bahan has been a shining light. I know yeah. that they haven't won any games, but she's kicked four goals across the last four games. Yeah. She's been really consistent down forward. Took a one-handed mark. You can check that out on our socials. We did the uh, mark of the week, so that was really didn't cool. Didn't rate it. You didn't rate it for some reason, oh. but uh, it was a one-handed mark, so anyway, he, he yeah. wasn't excited. Nah, it wasn't happy. And then You're the, funny. And then Gab <laughs> Colvin. Gab Colvin stepped up. Yeah, because she's from Wagga and you like her. But Daughter of a horse trainer, like... <laughs> Progeny of horse trainers are clearly the best people, <laughs> especially when they're from Wagga. Yeah, also, like I had a great game last night, Gab Coleman, except for the kick out in a full. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. That's all right. Anyway, I, yeah, I really like Bahana. I know Single and Robon have been dominating, but Bahana could get a goal as well. But yeah, Brisbane are going to smoke him. Here. Big question. What's the margin? Oh, Lions by 61. Oh, there we go. Calling it. 72. Oh, this is like. Do a, I go higher? This is yeah. a, this is a generational nah. like. Beating. Uh, okay. I'll go to 65. I'll go, I'll go, I'll I can't middle. believe mine was the lowest mark. I know. I know. Well, I was going to go lower, but now you've talked me into it. <laughs> I was like, I bet yours was lower before I no, said mine, I was, was it? No, I was always around the He's 70. Seven. Yeah. 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 Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to Fremantle Oval as the Dockers host Carlton. 4-1-1. One, and one. The last meeting was a draw, but before that, Freo won by 42 points. Carlton aren't going great at the moment, and Fremantle, despite not having, what, three of their best players? A couple of good forwards, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and also Kiara Bauer's not playing as well. They are going very, very yeah, well. Since they lost the forwards, they're like, oh, crap, we can't kick as big of a score because they don't really have as many goal kickers. But their defense has been awesome. The last three weeks they've considered 34, 27, and 14. So mm-hmm. they've each week they're sort of getting better at that defensive yeah. side. And if you, I know they might only score 30 points, but if you're only considering 14, 20 points, then you're yeah. like, oh, that's, that's not too bad. Yeah, I think when you have those injuries, teams – Teams with depth and like different strategies mm. have the ability to to make a different and try yeah. try a different game plan. Does it always work? No. No. But I think it's working, it's working for Fremantle. Yeah. They've gone a little bit more defensive and yeah. it's paying off. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I don't know how to feel about Carlton. They're not really filling me with much hope after last week's no. performance against Brisbane. Like they got absolutely blown off the park. It They've was got injuries. They had, but they had the gap. They had something to play for last week. Now they're gonna pack up and go across to Perth against a team that's going well. What have the what have they got to play for at the moment? I know Keely Shira and Abby McKay are getting a lot of the footy. Mm-hmm. The Moody's can't get their hands on it going forward. Darcy's yeah. not having their best season no. either. I wrote that about yeah, um, Moody, Brianna Moody, just yeah. heading forward. Got both of them. Well, we can get both of them. Just they need to look for them a little bit more. I know that they're not getting the ball as much. They are very tall and not as uh, agile as some other players, but they just need to look for them a bit more. The size in their forward line is actually pretty good. Yeah. But they'd sort of bomb it or they go wide or they go to their shorts. Go to the talls well, a little bit. Yeah, the yeah. talls aren't haven't haven't had the sticky fingers. No, that's yeah. true. That's, that's, it's been yeah. a bit of a concern. Yeah. Like I've been expecting much more out of them and it's like, eh. Yeah. I feel like they've got the um I feel like they've got the players, mm. but I just feel like um Carlton are a little behind the new game style that's yeah. in the AFLW a bit this quicker, year. Yeah. yeah, and they're just kind of like they're just getting sort of run over to all over the field and mm. they're getting a little bit caught out. So I just feel like there's a different game strategy that needs to come in yeah. there because we know they're riddled with injury as well. But if you've got new people, like let's try something different. Let's yeah. well that's let's, what Freo have done with, yeah. you know, not having uh B hours and and Statman. Mm. Like they're just like, oh yeah, we're gonna make this work. Yeah. It's fine. But like, Mimstrom's going to have an awesome game here. Like, Mimstrom, I, Hayley Miller has just been kicking goals from midfield, mm. 24 touches and a goal last week. Yeah. She's yeah. been awesome. They've got a lot of really good players, uh, Freya, that aren't often talked about, I yeah. think. Yeah. Mm. 
Maddie Guerin needs to play well for Carlton as well if they're going to keep this close. In yeah, she had a couple, a couple of good games and then has sort of dropped off a yeah. little bit, hasn't she? We, yeah. we talked about that Carlton midfield early on and how they were, you know, really linking up mm. and it's sort of it's dropped off and been unimpactful. Like how they yeah. played against uh, Geelong. Guerin was yeah. awesome that game. Yeah. They just need, yeah, that sort of level. <laughs> that game's so weird. That was a weird game because Carlton looked like unstoppable. They're not going to get back to that level, I don't yeah. think. But they could, yeah, they can put up a fight. Can Carlton show something? That's the big question. I'm going to say nope. I think they're they're pretty low low esteem at the moment. Mm. Um, they're they're, 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 they're th- limping to the line yeah. already, and it's week seven. Yeah, Freo by four goals. Yeah, I reckon Fremantle by three goals. I'll go Fremantle by twenty points. <laughs> just just above the three sure. goals. <laughs> Let's get to Hobart North Hobart Oval North Melbourne take on the Sydney Swans. This could be a bloodbath. Yeah, North I, won I, the only meeting by sixty six points. The Swans don't have a midfield. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Against one of the best midfielders. Against the best midfield. Or the, the, the best midfield. Tanya Kennedy is going to go straight to Jazzy Garner. Good luck, Tanya. I was saying, is it worth tagging Ash Riddell? I know that because you've got uh, averaging well, the yeah, most disposals in the comp. As well, don't you? Because there's two, there's two ways to do it. Every time they tag Garner, Riddell gets 35. Yeah. And every time they tag Riddell, uh, Garner gets but if 30. But if Garner has 25, it's going to be more impactful yeah. than a 30 from Riddell yeah. because Garner can get forward and kick goals as well. Well, and Riddell's only kicked one less goal than Garner, which surprised me this mm. season. But I agree. I agree that Garner is a little bit more uh, damaging. Yeah, so this one, Montana Ham allegedly uh, going to be back. She has a fitness test today. This is Thursday morning as we're recording. They need Just, it. They need <laughs> they it really definitely back. Need it, yeah. uh, Sophia Hurley is going to have to have a good game for the yeah. Swans for them to be any chance, but I struggle to see how the Swans are going to kick a score at all. I don't see them kicking more than four goals in this game because nah. – Privatelli, yeah, okay, she's taking some marks, but she's not. She's just not converting at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Alice Mitchell can probably bob up, but again, that's you've never seen it before. Paris McCarthy never kicked a goal before last week. Kicked three. She's doing all right. Where are the Swans? Like uh, Mini Cooper, Holly Cooper may have to be thrown in the midfield. I, I just don't. I don't see any way possible that the Swans get close here. And I'm just going through made, their list here, being yeah. like, who do we want? Yeah. And it's, yeah, there's not a lot, yeah. is there? Yeah. It's a tough one when they've got all these injuries and they have to come up against oh, yeah. the top team is but on 311%. Is, like. But this is also the uh, advent of this one's making the finals last year. They had a stronger draw, had to play, come up against North yeah. Melbourne, of course. And you know what? It's not a bad thing because now if this one slide down the ladder next year, they could be actually a good, a good, a good team draw. for the finals. Yeah, yeah, Everyone yeah, back totally. fit, a good draft yeah. pick, uh, resetting. So North Melbourne, they just keep continuing on. Kate Sheila or up forward. Doing well, there's of a damage. lot of the yeah. depth is like insane. You talk, I, every Lydia time I Birch. watch North as a North fan, I'm going, there's a lot of players here that no one talks about because of yeah. the older stars. You got mm-hmm. now nah, Neve Martin who kicked two goals last week. Like, Bala Eddie's averaging like 20 something touches. Taylor Gatt's the same. Amy Smith's really good tackling pressure. Just there's all these players at North that would be stars at other teams, I think, but they don't yeah. get the uh credit. That's yeah. just the depth at North is just yeah. unbelievable. So it's they're good. gonna they're gonna yeah. uh, smoke a meal. Yeah. Hopefully Giselle Davies can sort of lift in the ruck as well. Like her and Lexi Hamilton will be swapping through the ruck as well. We've got the Mitchells. Um, I think the Swans will have to look at what the Western Bulldogs did for the first half last week yeah. and be like, all right, let's just make this gross. Yeah. Make this gross, yeah. make it a slog. Okay, we might not win, but at least, you know, make North and go, oh, we actually had to pull something out here. Just need a mm-hmm. lockdown in the yeah. field, I think. Yeah. The big question, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double does Tanya Kennedy win the tagging role once again, as in like win the day? Because mm-hmm. I think she's won every tag she's done this year. How how much North win by? I'll get into how much North win by in my big call. Okay. But it's going to be a lot. I hate you, Stats. Can I, say, can I say a lot? <laughs> that's, yep. that's, a, a lot is my lot. margin. But a I'll get into how much uh, in my big call. I, I reckon this is like 40 to 10 and the Swans just lock this down and just try not to get blown away. Yeah. Weird things happen in Tassie. We didn't say that actually. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think anything weird's going to happen. I reckon five goals. I reckon the Swans put in a very stout defensive effort because their defense has been Four. pretty good. Except for that game against Richmond, they've been pretty strong. Okay, I'm going ruse by 46. 46, yeah. I'm, I'm ex- Goals. No, I'm yeah. going- <laughs> hey. World record. Big call. <laughs> I'm, ex- I'm expecting this one's to get belted. Oh, yeah. Uh, St Kilda take on the D's at RESA Arena Park at 3.05 p.m. The D's lead this 3-1. to one. They won by four goals the last time these two played. Of course, both teams played midweek. <clears throat> the D's come off the pretty tough and brutal affair last night against the Crows at Norwood. St Kilda had a sort of pretty easy run through as well. So... The fitness, the fatigue, the soreness and yeah. everything else will come into play more so for Melbourne here because they've also got to fly home. Yeah. Whereas St Kilda, just chilling in Frank, oh, chilling in Frankston, chilling in Moorabbin. Moorabbin, yeah. They're still on the 
uh, oh, a day apart in yeah. in terms of their. But it's also a flight day. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. It's still a flight. Like, travel comfy. takes travel. Yeah. It does. Like, it does. Think about Even it. when you're in your twenties, but and think you're an about elite it. Athlete. You, you true, played true. last night. Your game finishes at like nine o'clock Adelaide time. You go through Messages all your, sleep, all your warm guess. down, yeah, you, yeah. you shower, you have something to eat. You're probably still not getting to sleep till one, two in the morning. And then you're probably flying home at nine. Yeah. Mm. Like, no, I'll give you that. Not I'll optimal. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, you're a bit stiff and sore. You're sitting on a plane for an hour. And then you got to go through a routine. Yeah, it's not It's not ideal. Mm. Whereas St Kilda, it's like, yeah, cool. Like, probably slept in today. Yeah. Melbourne will be very like they'll up and about pumped. now because they're like, we just beat Adelaide. We can beat anyone. But they'll be like, oh, it wasn't that convincing, obviously. <laughs> they just need to find a way to kick a few more goals because the Saints have proven they can kick goals. No, nah, yeah. they did it once. No, well, they've done it about three or four times this season compared to Melbourne. They've only done it oh, once or twice, I think, the whole yep. year. So I'm a little bit worried about that. Goldrick's going to be good. I wrote down uh, Darcy Gutridge has been yeah. really good. I think someone that isn't often talked about but been really good for the Saints. Every goal they get, I feel like, uh, yeah, she has a hand in, 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 yeah. in, in the goal there. So, yeah. I think it'll be a pretty fun matchup. Yeah, I think it will Weirdly be a fun matchup I think it'll be more too. open than the uh, Adelaide-Melbourne yeah. game as well. Well, they're both coming off good wins. Mm. Uh, but before that, you know, they haven't been terribly impressive. No. So it'll be really interesting. Um the matchups there. I think I think Melbourne is gonna be able to pull this one off. Really? Yeah. Oh. I do. Um just I I feel like they're just sort of starting to click with their different options that they can use with all of those those injuries. Injuries, yeah. Yep. Um and I just think Melbourne need to create they've got one of the fastest like forwards in the AFLW in Alyssa Bannon. Yeah. They need to clear she played well last everyone night too. out of been their good. 50 and, and just, just let her run. Let her run onto it. Honestly. Nine cool. times out of ten, There's that's a, lot a goal. Of hair there too. And if she's <laughs> up and about, she's yeah. a real confidence player. Yeah. So if she's up and about, um, she doesn't just kick one, she kicks two, she kicks three. So um I think if 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 they can change the way they're playing and get in, I reckon there's they're up and about. All right. So, so big question. Can the Saints get that mid-forward connection right for the second game in a row? I think they can. I, I think Melbourne, they were lucky to win. They're still not that impressive. They're still, what are they, a fair way out of the eight. So I think, yeah. They're, think they're they only a game and a half, out, a game, game and a half out of it yeah. now. So they I, need to win. I still think, yeah, the Saints, yeah, they can. They definitely can. Like they did last week. Saints by a kick. Melbourne by a kick. Melbourne. Oh, I'll say Saints by two kicks. How about that? <laughs> Two what goals. Is, what is two kicks? You don't know. Two, po- two points. It's got two points. Yeah, after I'm last be like- night, it's two points. Uh, <laughs> let's get to Henson Park. Final game of the round, 5 at 5 p.m. GWS Giants take on the Adelaide Crows. Uh, for Giants fans watching it, please hit me up to let me know if you got the free coach to Henson Park like Swans fans do. Oh, Hopefully you got that. Mm. 5 at 5 on the hill of daylight savings. That would be great. Be nice. Chef's yeah. kiss. Yeah. The great, sun will be shining. Great hang on the hill. Also very good light set up there. So if it does get dark, <laughs> very no good problems. Set up. No problems. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just funny. What anyway, uh, the, Crows, light set up. <laughs> the Crows will be bristling after losing <clears throat> last night. GWS, like, oh, thank God we're out of Frankston. Henson Park's way better. Mm. Uh, how the hell did GWS get a draw against Adelaide once upon a time? Again, once upon a time, they used to play decently. Yeah. Yeah. It still mm. shocks my mind seeing Like that. we said, I think we said this earlier on in the season, since the, the all the new teams have come in, it's sort of ex- uh, made the gap a bit bigger because of the team. There's so many more teams. It was mm. it used to be a bit closer when there Where, was like well, 10 no, to 15 also teams. Yeah. GWS are always going to struggle to get top talent because the salaries aren't good enough to get people who want to They've go to- They've got some good players yeah. No, no, but what I mean draft, is the salary yeah. cap, think about how much it costs to rent in Sydney and going all the way out to the west of Sydney. Yeah. It's not like here in Melbourne where you can probably live in somewhere like, I don't know, if you can live on the north side, if you can live in Collingwood, Fitzroy, Brunswick, you've got all the teams around yeah. there. If you're playing for St Kilda or even the Western Bulldogs, you don't have to live out in the sticks. True. Whereas playing for Fremantle, uh, not Fremantle, GWS. GWS, you have to live out like out past Parramatta. And you're in the middle of nowhere. And no, <laughs> I've lived in Sydney. It sucks once you leave Parramatta. <laughs> it's gross. It's not go. great. So mm. why would people want to go there? Because if you're living in uh, Bondi, it's an hour drive. And it's like, if I'm Bondi, I'm going to play for the Swans. Yeah. No, you're making a good point. I don't think they can afford to live in Bondi, can they? Can uh, anyone? Uh, can anyone? Sh- <laughs> a lot of share housing going on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah, true, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Like gotcha. A four-bedroom house split between four and Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Haven't yeah. shared a house in a while. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a long time. Housemates. <laughs> uh, anyway, Adelaide will be absolutely desperate to turn it around because two losses now does put top four a little bit shaky. And mm. a few, like, wins that Bryony mentioned that, 
they just scraped over the line. They're like, they literally fell over the line. Was it last week or the week before? Mm. St. Kilda. Yeah. Again, yeah, exactly. Against St. Kilda. Mm. Haven't looked good at all. For mm. their, their stars in their lineup where you go on, they should just, they should smash Giants by 50 points. But yeah. I'm not that confident in them right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It, it's weird, isn't mm. it? It is. It is. Because they're Cause always they have, the benchmark. Yeah, they're always the benchmark. They're mm. always in that top three. Mm. They've got, they've got a player in there who's probably going to win the W award this year. Yep. Like, and they've got so many incredible players, but for whatever reason, it's just not linking up how it has been yeah. um, in previous years. So, are they trying to just wait to like build into the season so they don't no. run out of puff again? Well, they're not on purpose, but maybe they're like, oh, we always make finals. Think so about think fun. about the Swans in the middle of the year stats guy in the, in the men's. They were that they just knew they were that much better. I know, but yeah, I I get what you're saying, but they're not. Per- purposefully but, like doing it. No, it's not, but it's in the back of your mind. Mentality. It's a bit of complacency. Aren't it? it's, Possibly, it's yeah. Fi- Possibly. Like, we're going to be top four. It's fine. As yeah. long as we get to the top four, we're sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Like Danny Alponta last night just looked, she looked like mm. like low frequency. You yeah. know what I mean? They do, flat, they're starting yeah. to look a little bit flat. So mm. this will be really interesting if they're going to come out as the crows that we know and be like, hey, guys, we've been a bit shit. Really sorry. Here we go. Yeah, true, true. Or if they're going to be like, ugh, and just try and scrape over the line So again. they either, there's no in between here. This is a smashing or it's four goals to three. Yeah. There is yeah, no. I agree. So the, nah, I don't think it's going to be that close, but I know, I know what you're the saying. The big yeah. question here is, is fatigue an issue for Adelaide? Because they threw everything at that Brisbane game that they should have won and, and got robbed of. Mm. Then they've struggled against St Kilda. They struggled last night against the D's. Like their scoring has got lower and lower each week. Uh, I, I think it will be an issue because you've got some players that literally give it their all. Like not, there's a lot of players in their team that are giving their all and they're putting their body on the line. And when you're backing it up and having to play two games in a week, yeah. oh, that's really tough for like, even though Marinoff we know is a superstar and probably will still kill it, it is tough when you're that type of player that's getting lots of tackles just in and under Hatchard as well. It would take a, a toll on your body for sure. Yeah. Mm. And they're also, um, <clears throat> you know, they've been good for so long and, you know, yeah. you tend to rely on people and you know what to <clears throat> yeah, expect true. from people. Yep. And then those people start to not do that as well oh. as they have done and you go, where were you? Yeah. And I feel like there might be a little bit of, a bit of frustration and maybe they haven't had that before and that's something they might be dealing True. with. True. They're not used to losing, yeah. actually. So Adelaide by three goals. Three goals. Oh, I think it's going to be a I'm going to believe in the Crows. I'm going to go the crow, Crows of old. I'm going to say Crows by 46. 46. I'll, I'll go I'll go Crows by 30. I think, yeah, I agree. I think they, they'll still be good enough and Giants have not shown enough the last couple of weeks. So. Oh, yeah, Giants. Like, yeah. Yeah. No bueno. All right. Big call <laughs> for the weekend. What is a big call? Stats guy, you had one about North and the Swans. Yes, my beloved North. Uh, sorry, Alex. Uh, big Swans man over there. North will get their record win. Oh, 70, wow. 70 plus points. So that's, that's you go, that is really mean. It is a bit Liam. mean, but they've got so many injuries, the Swans. They are uh, only time they've ever met North won by 66. I think North are a that's better. That's when the Swans didn't win a game. I know. But I think North are a better <laughs> we were bad. North are a better side now as well. You got the Ruse ability to smash Port and Carlton was both by uh well, yeah, Carlton was 69 points. I think they're gonna get their record win. 70 plus points is my big call. That's a good big call. Yeah. Thank you. My big call is just the Brisbane by 61. And also I think it's a big call Adelaide by 46. Yeah. Oh, they're double it up. I double was going to say, double yeah, I Br- like it. Brisbane recorded the biggest win of the weekend. Yeah. Whoa, more than North. Yep, 100%. Ooh. Do we, we should actually review these big calls and be <laughs> yeah. like, hey, yeah. yeah. You were Stats right. Stats guy, put them in the run Yeah, yeah that's, that's in the run. That could uh, be his little social. That rolls well. straight into the keep an eye on. Who wins by the most, Brisbane or North? The Light Crows could be north, up there but... as well. Also, keep an eye on the Bombers. Are they real mm. or are they not? Yeah, if you get they... a big win, you're like, all right, we can have a little bit of confidence and they will build confidence just going, we can smash the lower yeah. teams. Yeah. It'll be Rich- a tester. Richmond, yes. Richmond and Geelong. Which Geelong turn up are Richmond legit as well because doesn't believe in them yet, still tipping them to win. And I also just really like everyone who plays for Richmond also. There you go. Yeah, there you, <laughs> you go. Just, you want, There's a you lot just, of guys. Friend of the team. Friend of the team. You want more from Richmond. Yeah. You want more. Yeah. What, what if they win in every game? What else it's like do you any want? relationship. Excellent communication will help you get where you want to go. Okay. There we yeah. go. That's a different podcast as well. One of the other <laughs> 16 podcasts of Brian. It's like as a friend of mine says, prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Yes. Wow. It's the six P's. Yeah, I've heard six that one. Six P's. Yeah. Shout out to Dave's at True Bloods. All right. <laughs> that'll do us for AFLW today for, well, today. Big thanks to professional Brian.
<laughs> Looks nice. Thanks to the stats, man. Thank you. And of course, Tiana Smith from St Kilda for jumping on the show. Remember to smash a like across the social to see us doing stuff, filling in all of your footy gaps throughout the season. Basically, we have AFL content covered all the way through till December. Yes. You want footy? We got it because footy. Footy is always back. Remember, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, of course, YouTube. Hit the notifications button so you get a little ding anytime a yes. video pops up. Yes. Of course, we're doing a bunch of fun stuff. Make sure you check out the TikTok of rating gay or not gay or not gay enough for the Pride Guernseys this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. <laughs> and maybe something super else. Super gay. <laughs> <laughs> the super gay. All right. Get around them like, I don't know, Stats Guy got around the barn me I bought for him on a Monday yes, afternoon. Like winning bets. How good's a good barn oh, me? Oh, we got one not far from us yeah. here. That's oh, really good. That, yeah. that, Delicious. Could, that could be the, what I owe you for last Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll take a barn me over a pie. All right, we nice. can do that. Make sure it's got that pate on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh it does, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> barn me review is coming your way. <laughs> anyway, that's it. We'll catch you Monday for a review of Pride Round and, of course, more AFLW today. Till then, look after yourselves and remember... What is back? <laughs>